Okay, just a little update on the Supermax. What I'm doing now is I'm rewiring the lube pump and the uh, limit switches. You can see one down there. These cords are old or they're too short. And I'm doing that right now in uh, the Z axis. Um, there were two. There were two limit switches. One was mounted in here. One was mounted in here, kind of like this. And this one. This one was mounted like, kind of like this. There we go. So it had a. These are limit switches, and then uh, the two on the right are limit switches, and the one on the left was a home switch. Um, we don't need to have all three of them. We're just going to have uh, the limit switches, and and uh, this one here, the Z positive, will act as the home switch as well. So I'm pulling out all this. I'm pulling out all this old wiring and uh, getting it rewired. Got to do the same thing with the x-axis, pull this out and rewire it. And then um, same thing here is uh, rewiring the y-axis uh, limit switches as well. Um, there was something hinky going on with the way these things are mounted. Um, there, was a, there was a plunger affair up here like this and it pushed down on the, the limit switch here. As you can see, the servo motor comes in here, so it's quite tight. So I think it was an effort to get some room and put the limit switch below the uh, servo motor. That's my guess anyway. And then also, I've got to rewire the, uh, the spindle motor and then the spindle fan, the head fan. Um, I've already replaced this solenoid valve. This was leaking pretty bad, and uh, what it does is the control will energize it when the spindle is running, and uh, it will take the brake off and disable the power draw bar. You can see I've got the Z-axis uh, servo motor mounted up. On the uh, X-axis servo, I've got a bit of a challenge. This is my this is the this is the servo motor that I have right here, and um, there's not much sticking out. What I'm trying to do is see if I can get enough pulley stick out. You can see that x-axis pulley is kind of recessed in the housing. Um, so I've got to play with that. Otherwise what I might end up having to do is I might end up having to take this take this uh, thrust bearing mount off and uh, machine this machine some material off of this housing so that the servo motor gets closer to the uh, x-axis uh, pulley. So yeah, these are things that need to get done. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, the control's ready to go in, but I want to get all these cables and ancillary things taken care of before I get the control in there. So once it's in, I can start wiring it all up. So, and then the other thing is, these, uh, way covers had been installed on this machine at one point and uh, caused a problem up here. There was a, way, a bellows way cover here and uh, when it's all compressed it doesn't let the, the y-axis come all the way forward. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Right now the y-axis is all the way forward and then if you put that bellows cover in there, that compressor won't let it come all the way forward. Let me show you what's on my other mill. I have an accordion way cover on it, but it's a very lightweight one. Okay, here's my other mill, and I have this accordion way cover, and it's very lightweight, but what it does is, is it actually rolls forward when the y-axis is all the way in the positive position. So it allows full travel of the y-axis where that other one on the Supermax doesn't allow full travel of that y-axis and uh, uh, like I said I'm wondering if that was causing some issues. Uh, so anyway that's an update on the Supermax. 
Um, I also got a new servo motor to replace the y-axis but the one I got from the seller I bought it off of eBay it was bad you can kind of hear it here's the motor here you can hear it and then when I turn it in the opposite direction it locks up you can see it locking up so I got a bad motor. They were sell they were selling them as new selling it as a new motor, and it's a bad it's a used motor. In fact, you can see that the motor had been mounted, so they could have seen that as well. Now the seller has all positive feedback. Oh, and the other thing is it had no encoder in it. That's not a big deal. I had to put one on it anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think this is used, and I think this is new from a new motor. So I think what they did is just swap this out put it on and then they swapped it out and this is a wore out motor so yeah it sucks and but the seller has positive feedback so let's see how he handles it he was very slow in getting it shipped to me let me tell you so uh, that's where I'm at right now in the Supermax I'm going as far as I can to get that machine all wired up and all the limit switches done and everything else and then I've got to deal with this uh, servo motor Okay, I've got uh, everything rewired. Let's start on this side. Here's the lube pump. Got a new cord on it. Ready to go into the control cabinet. And then here, this pump had a uh, low lube alarm switch. So I, I drilled and put a bushing in there and wired up the uh, cable to the low lube switch. I got strain reliefs and existing holes in the cabinet and I went ahead and labeled them so I know which cable goes into what connector it's just uh, so it makes the wiring neater inside the cabinet and then we come down here <clears throat> to the Y positive limit switch that's a brand new limit switch I had to make a bracket uh, to fit it on there and get it adjusted the tripper was already there so my Y uh, axis positive direction limit switches on this side of the knee. Uh, you recall f that uh, I had a space problem on this side of the knee because the servo motor mounts here and uh, there really wasn't a lot of good room here for the uh, Y positive switch. So over here, here's my Y negative switch. It's all bolted on and it's adjusted trippers. I had to modify the tripper a little bit, mill in a ramp uh, on it to mesh with the switch. That's also wired up. And uh, so that's done. And same with the x-axis limit switch. I just basically rewired it, put a new cable on it. Z-axis is uh, also installed, kept the original limit switches, they're good, they were clean, replaced the cable. Um, so that's that's all completed. Exits ahead on this side, comes back and then drops down, it's going to go in one of those strain reliefs. And then the other thing that needed to be done, uh, the cable for the spindle motor was long enough, so there's no problem there, but uh, I had to make... Uh, a longer cable for the spindle head fan so that's all taken care of so all the external devices now um, are all wired up that's all ready um, so now I can go ahead and install the all-in-one DC and uh, the back panel and start wiring all this external stuff up I'm still waiting on resolving an issue with the servo motor. I had ordered a servo motor and uh, turned out it was a bad one. It had bad bearings. So uh, uh, I've still got to work on that, but uh, there's plenty for me to do to keep plowing forward while I'm resolving the servo motor issue for the X axis. And then I got to deal with the depth issue, see if I can get the pulleys, maybe pull this out a little bit and push the other one a little bit and see if they'll line up well enough to. Uh, have good belt alignment. So that's where I'm at right now. 
Um, going to post this video and then I'm going to get back to work and get the all-in-one DC back panel installed in the cabinet and start getting these cables pulled in here and wiring it up. So that's where I'm at now. See you guys on the next one.